If you store your data in a NAS, chances are you want to retrieve the data again, right? One convenient way to achieve that in Linux is to expose a NFS share and to auto mount it into your installation. And this is exactly what we want to do in this video. Let's get into it. Hi, this is Karsten with OpenTech and while you are here, don't forget to like, to subscribe and to hit the notification bell since it helps. And now let's mount a NFS share. Let's add it to the file system table so it gets restored every time we reboot the system and you can easily access all of your data. Let's get into it. To be able to mount a NFS share exposed by a NAS, we need to install either NFS commons or NFS utils, depending on your distribution. I'm doing that on an Arch Linux now. So I type sudo pacman minus s nfs minus utils. I authenticate and now the NFS utils get installed. On Ubuntu or Debian or other distributions, you might need to use NFS commons instead of NFS utils. Check that with your distribution. Once installed, we can actually mount something. If you don't need to persist a mount, you can simply create and remove it whenever you like. Mounts are represented using directories in your local file system. So you want to create a directory first. I want to create a directory in my slash mnt folder and I will therefore execute sudo make dear slash mnt slash nas. Now we can actually mount the remote share to the directory. With Linux mounts, we don't need to do any explicit authentication. All permissions are based upon the username and the IP of your machine. By the way, if you are interested in how to expose a share on a server, let me know in the comments below. To mount the server share onto our directory, we would type sudo mount minus tnfs ip of the server colon shared path space local path. So in my case, the command would be sudo mount minus tnfs ip address of the remote server colon path on the remote server, which is slash mnt slash nas minus work slash open tag. And I want to mount it to mnt nas. It just works. If you don't get any error message, everything is great. So now we can work with the directory. Let's start the files application and let's head over to the directory. And as you can see, I already have something in there which was stored on the remote system. Perfect, I can now work with that. Save it edit it, whatever my permissions allow me to do. If you don't need your mount anymore, you could either reboot or remove the mount. Obviously, removing is way more convenient. The command to do so would be sudo umount followed by the local path. In my case, it would therefore be sudo umount slash mnt slash nas. And as you can see in the files application, nothing is visible anymore because now the mount has been removed and therefore all of the remote contents are not accessible anymore. As simple as it is to mount something on demand, most often we want to have a permanent mount, right? To achieve that, we need to edit the fstab file, which defines how partitions and remote file systems should be mounted permanently. A word of caution up front, take a backup of your fstab file first by typing sudo cp slash etc slash fstab and you want to copy it to slash etc slash fstab dot back. Perfect, we now can safely work with the fstab file in case something goes wrong, we can always restore it. So now let's edit the fstab file and add a permanent mount. We type sudo nano slash etc slash fstab and here you can see the already existing information within your fstab file. So what we want to do is we want to go all the way down to the bottom and add our NAS here. The format is always remote path, tab or space local path, tab or space file system type, tab or space options, tab or space 
dump tab or space FS check flags. We can safely ignore the last two ones and set them to default values, but the first information we need to set. Let's now add the information for accessing our NAS. In my case, it is the IP address of my NAS, followed by colon and the exposed path, mount NAS minus work, open tag. I want to mount it to slash mnt slash nas. The file system is nfs. The options are defaults followed by zero and one. Let's store it. And now we can activate the mount. The command for doing that is sudo mount minus a. In case something is incorrect, this command will tell us rather than just mounting something which is not working at all. So let's type it and let's see what happens. sudo mount minus a. As you can see, we are now told that the FS tab file has been modified, but our system would still use the old version known to it. We could now either reboot or we could type sudo systemcuttle daemon reload. And we obviously do the latter one because why should we want to reboot? sudo systemcuttle daemon reload. Now my share is available again. We can now verify that everything went well and smoothly by opening the file system browser and by navigating to other locations, Arch Linux, MNT, NAS. And as you can see, the content of the remote directory is available. I can easily work with that. I can do whatever I want to do and it behaves as if it was a local directory. Keep in mind, it's not. It's still a remote directory. So when you transfer big chunks of files, it feels as if it would be a local operation, but your network speeds would still be there and present. So if you have a slow network, operations might take a while. And you want to take that into consideration before you hard reset your machine or before you reboot. This wasn't that hard, right? Have you made any good or bad experiences with Mount? Let me know in the comments below. And while you are there, don't forget to like, to subscribe and to hit the notification bell since it helps. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Ciao.